Okay, so here's another video on the capital asset pricing model, and we're going to talk about beta, and more especially, we're going to talk about solving for individual betas. Now, this is a very cool question. We've done a similar one on my YouTube channel, but this one is maybe slightly different and uses kind of actual like data from Microsoft, PepsiCo, Apple, and Tesla. So it's going to be slightly fun, a little bit different. Now, this is something that you may see on your exam. So it's important to understand what is the methodology that a student like myself who did extremely well in the class and that's helped several students to date, what are the best methods to go about this? And what are the different concepts that you need to understand to solve this question as the undergrad or a graduate stu uh, student or somebody just simply solving for their um, CFA level one? So hopefully this helps. Now, I please, please, like I, I, please do this, okay? Please open your cheat sheet, have it with you when you do these questions and follow the steps I take. This is the best methodology to really, really, really internalize content and study effectively, okay? It's not about doing what I did. Like, sure, you wanna understand what I did, but I won't be there on your exam. So please follow these steps one by one and kind of kind of try to do it um, like that for future questions. So right now we know that we're gonna do a beta question, all right? We just started your senior job at La at the Caisse des Depots et Placements du Québec. I don't know why I said that's so weird, but there's still a job there. And you were tasked with managing their new equities practice that focuses on investing in individual stocks. The fund, all right, the portfolio, in other words, holds the following equities. So you have four equities. You have Microsoft, you have PepsiCo, you have Apple, and then you have Tesla, all right? And all of these different stocks you've invested different amounts into them, okay? That's gonna be pretty important in just a second. And all of these different stocks, they seem to have different betas, of course, different risk profiles, different systematic risk profiles. However, notice how we don't have the beta for Tesla yet. Uh-oh, we may need to solve for that. But before we get there, um, the question also tells you that you need to note that the fund's required rate of return, okay, is seven and a half percent. And the risk-free rate of return is a beautiful number, 2.8%, okay? The return on the market portfolio seems to trend towards 10.5%. Now, what is Tesla's estimated beta? So they really told you, listen, what are we solving for? Well, we're solving for Tesla's estimated beta. So this is going to be our mission, the purpose of this question. We're solving for this little random like number here that we don't know yet, all right? So with a question like this, there's really two formulas that we need to internalize, that we need to work with. And I'm going to highlight them for you. And essentially, to be fair with you, for this chapter, there's really only a few um, formulas that you need. You could actually count them on your hand. But there are two really important formulas that you need. Okay, and I'm going to kind of like type them or, type, or draw them at the top of this page. All right. So let's write that down right now. For a CAPM. There are two formulas that you really, really need to internalize and remember, okay? And they will be the following. It's going to be the formula for the SML. It's going to be the formula for beta, okay? And I'm going to just bring these up slightly such that we have a little bit more space, okay? And I'm also going to zoom in such that it's a little bit cuter when I write, okay? So let's, let's, let's check this out. What is the formula for the SML and what is the formulas for beta? Now, in previous videos, I've talked about different, you know, three formulas for beta, but for the context of this video, we're really gonna look at one core, really core um, formula here, okay? So for the SML, it's pretty straightforward. It's the required rate of return. I'm gonna wait for the little horn cycle to pass. So for the SML, what you need to understand is that it's going to be the required rate of return. It's going to be equal to the risk-free rate plus beta, okay, times the market risk premium. And the market risk premium is ERM minus RF, okay? Whereas for beta, we could write it in two ways. We could write it in the like disgusting way, which is simply the weighted sum of its individual betas or we could write it in a better way, okay. just like that. Actually, I'll maybe do this instead. 
or we could write it like this. Okay, the beta of a portfolio will be equal to the weight of asset A times the beta of asset A plus the weight of asset B times the beta of asset B plus three little dots to highlight continuity towards infinity, saying that we're going to continue this process again and again and again, because this is a series. So we just add till the series is over. And we're going to have the weight of the end asset. So the infinite asset <laughs> times the beta of that end asset. Okay. So these are really the two formulas that we need here. And the reason why that's important is because when we solve questions, we really just want to see if we could find these like little pieces of information within our question. And then we're just going to highlight them within our formula and solve for the missing variable. Now, what's awesome here is that if we look at our question, we know that they told you that the fund, right, has a required rate of return that's equal to, and I guess I'll zoom in a little bit just to make this, once again, a little cuter. <laughs> um, the, the required rate of return, okay? If you just reread the question, they tell you, hey man, it's K is equal to seven and a half percent, okay? Then they tell you that the risk-free rate is equal to two, 0.8%. Then they also tell you that the market return, it trends towards 10.5%. So ERM is equal to 10.5%. Okay. So we have a lot of information. And if we zoom out, we could actually just look at our formula and say, yo, whoa, we actually have a bunch of stuff here. We have RK we have our risk-free rate, we have our ERM. However, I'm gonna highlight this in red, we don't have our beta. That's what we're missing right now. And listen, if, if you don't know what to do, the first step is always to solve for that missing variable because they're always gonna give you enough information to kind of make it work for you, okay? So just another thing that I would like to highlight here, the K that we got, right? This K that we have right here, that's the K of our total portfolio. And our portfolio here is going to be our fund. And as you can see, our fund, it consists of four different assets. We have four different assets. So if we were to kind of like rewrite the beta, the portfolio beta, we could actually write it as being something pretty straightforward. Okay? And I hope this makes sense. And if not, Thank God I have more videos out there that kind of talk about this a little bit more in detail. But you would notice that we could write the beta of this specific portfolio for the CDPQ as being weight one times beta of asset one times, I mean, plus weight two times beta of asset two plus weight three times beta of asset three plus weight four times beta of asset four because we know that we only have four assets. So already there, we know that we could kind of like get into something. The first step realistically would be to solve for this missing variable that we have here. That would be the first step because it's literally kind of screaming at us, okay? And if you kind of really put it in perspective, this here would be the beta of our portfolio. And once we find that, we'll be able to use this formula here to our advantage. And you'll see just how. So let's start with part A or part one, which is solving for the missing variable, which is solving for the portfolio beta of the CDPQ fund. Okay, so I'm gonna just go all the way here, bottom of the screen, and we're gonna write part one. Solving for portfolio beta. So of course, at this rate, you should know that K is equal to the risk-free rate plus beta times the return on the market minus the risk-free rate. Now, just to be super comprehensive, once again, we're looking for beta, okay? And in this question, we know what our K is and we kind of know like a bunch of information. 
I want to go ahead and just remind myself what k is because uh, I'm an old man that doesn't have good memory. <laughs> but our k would be 7.5%. It was actually written right in front of me. I'm sorry, it's my like 12th video in the day. So I kind of get lost sometimes. But we have 7.5% is equal to 2.8%. That's a beautiful number, so I won't forget it. Plus our missing variable, which is beta, times 10.5% minus, once again, the great number 2.8, all right? And then we could say that beta is equal to. Now, it's my first time actually building this question and doing it. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to plug everything in. I'm going to solve for x. So we know that 7.5 is equal to 2.8 plus x times 10.5 minus 2.8. Now, is that fair? We're going to zoom out and we're just going to make a quick sense check to see that all the information kind of aligns here. All right, so if we look at everything, we notice, okay, our k is 7.5%. That's amazing. We know that that's equal to 2.8, right? 2.8% plus the missing beta times 10.5 minus 2.8. That's amazing news. Everything is aligning. We didn't make any mistakes. So this would mean that our missing beta would be Let's just zoom in real quick. We'll be equal to 0 0.61. And I'll give you the decimal points as well. So I'll zoom in a little bit more. It'll be 0 0.61038. And really, this is our portfolio's beta. Okay, this is really good news. So we now have our portfolio beta. Now, what are we going to do with this? We understand, okay, like we literally, we have it now. It's kind of starting to make a little bit of sense. We have this value here, okay? We have this value. And we know that the question is asking you to solve for a specific value. We're solving for the Tesla, right? The Tesla beta that we don't have yet. But as you can see, technically, if we were to like say that this is asset one, this is asset two, and this is asset three, and this is asset four, technically we would have the beta of asset one, we would have the beta of acid two, and we would have the beta of acid three, but we wouldn't have the beta of acid four, okay? So if we just wanna go back to our formula and highlight all the things that we do have, we would say, well, you know what? Technically, in terms of unknowns, what we do know is that we have beta one, we have beta two, and we have beta three. However, do we also have the weights of these different assets of Microsoft, of PepsiCo, and of Apple and Tesla? Well, technically we do. And it's actually a very, very easy like methodology. It's a very easy trick, not even a trick, method to find it. All that you need to do is find the total, um, the total sum of money invested into City Pictures Fund. As you can see here, we actually have, and I'll use a different color here and I'll zoom in a little bit. We actually have the dollar value of every single you know, equity in City Pictures Fund. And I know I'm zooming in a lot, but I just really want to make this like comprehensive. So you have essentially, technically, if you would want to, the weight of A, I mean, the weight of one, the weight of two, and the weight of three and four. However, there's just one little trick that you need to do. You need to put these value on the total value of the portfolio. So you need to divide this by the total value of the portfolio. So the sum of the value of the portfolio. So you need to do that for every single one of these, right? Because you need to find the proportion that's allocated to each and single one of these. So what you could do is pretty straightforward. We could do it together. 25 plus 25 is 50. That plus 10 is 60. That plus 15 is 75. Okay, so the fund, right? The fund that we are invested in, right, has $75 million invested in the fund, okay? So all that you would do here is 10 divided by 75, 25 divided by 75, 15 divided by 75, and here we would have 25 divided by 75, such that you could actually find the weight of every single one of these little friends of ours. So, Let's figure it out. 10 divided by 75 is going to give you 
Now you could either decide to keep them as fractions, but I know a lot of students don't like that. So we could also put them as percentages. So this would be 10.33%. 25 over 75 would be 33.33%. 15 over 75 would be 20%. This would be 33.33%. So with that, we are ecstatic because we really did find all of the information we need. Well, to solve for the missing variable, and you'll see why. Because now we have weight of one, we have weight of two, we have weight of three, and we have weight of four. The only thing that we're missing is the beta of asset four. And it becomes simple. We've done this thousands of times at this point, especially me, because I've, I've done like I've done like 12 videos today, man. My brain is, is on fire. But <laughs> all jokes aside. It's a simple step now. You just got to solve for B4, right? The beta of Tesla. And it becomes a game of simple algebra, okay? So let's do it together. Let's have fun. Let's make it happen. So let's kind of just highlight part two. And I, I guess I'll already here just for fun. Part two. Solving. for beta four. Okay, so at this point, um, I think I'm just gonna copy this. Do I want to do all that? Yeah, I will. I'm gonna copy this and I'm gonna write it down over there just because I'm lazy, don't wanna write it again. Whoops, this, 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 this. There you go, I'm gonna copy that here, I'm gonna do this. So we know that this is this this holds, okay? And we know what the beta of our portfolio is. Now my brain is that of a child. I can't remember anything, but the beta of our portfolio is equal to 0 0.61038. I guess we're gonna have to move this a little bit to the left just because there's no way we have enough space. So we're gonna go like that. Yeah, just like that. And we know that um, this, and I'm going to use fractions just to make it easier in terms of spacing. So 10 over 75. Okay. So 10 over 75 times the beta of asset one, which is 0 0.93. Plus one third because 25 over 75, I hope that's clear. Plus one third times zero point fifty seven. Plus uh, 15 over 75 is one fifth. Plus one fifth times 1.19. Plus one third, if I'm not mistaken, that should be correct, times x. So we could just write this as being x. Okay. So then it becomes a question of solving for x. And I'm not going to do the whole algebra piece of it, but I will tell you what the answer is. So just to make it clear, we could maybe like just highlight these into different, oops, different colors. Just such that when you review, it makes sense. So this would be one portion, another portion of our formula, another portion of the formula. And this would be for solving for. Okay, so I'm going to write this down into my little calculator that I have with me. So we know that this is equal to that. So at the same time, you can do it with me, which is kind of awesome. So we have this. We know that it's going to be equal to 10 75 times 0.3. Then after that, you know me, I am a big fan of reviewing my work. So I know that I make little stupid mistakes, like a staple of, at Isma helps. Well, pretty much a staple at Isma is, but uh, 19 plus one third x. Okay, that makes sense. So let's check it out together. And we're going to make sure that we have all of the correct variables. Now, you probably already, you know, you're probably, you already had the answer. But I'm an old man that needs to make sure everything is good. 
So we know that the beta of the portfolio, we calculated it, it's 0 0.61, almost. So that's going to be on our left-hand side. We know that we have the weight of Microsoft, which is 10 over 75 times 0 0.93. It's exactly what we have. Then we're going to add that to one-third times 0 0.57. That makes sense. We have that as well. <clears throat> Voice crack. Then we're going to have 15 over 75, which is one-fifth, right? Times 1.19. We have that as well. Then we're going to have one third times x because that's 25 over 75. That makes sense in my brain. So we could solve for x. So in this case, what will be x? x will be equal to, to the, is it giving me the correct answer? You guys will let me know as well. I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna say that it gave us the right answer. I got an answer, but I'm just gonna retry it just in case. I got zero point one seven five one four. I feel like we're still at the same answer. Okay, so I'm gonna go with that. I'm gonna do a proof afterwards just to be sure. But it seems like that is the correct answer in my books. We have beta is equal to one seven five. I'll actually do the proof right now with y'all just to make sure that this is bueno. Let's see what we get. Yeah, that seems like it should be the answer. So the beta of Tesla in an ideal world would have been <laughs> of 0 0.17 almost. But obviously in real life, that's nowhere close to the case. It's actually two units of beta bigger than that in real life. That's just me like nerding out on how Tesla is actually a very interesting, um, you know, set of returns to like look at in the long, not in the long term, but just over the last 10 years that it's been publicly traded like uh, on a NASDAQ. Well, from what I've seen on Yahoo Finance, it's, it's crazy. One month of returns on Tesla, once it actually made 83% returns. So if you look at a normal distribution of the returns on Tesla, it's actually something ridiculous. But anyways, that's for a whole other, a whole other time. So this is how you solve one of these questions. It's as simple as that. The first step was finding what the heck was our portfolio beta, right? We had to solve for that. But then it was simple. We just had to figure out, well, okay, if that's our portfolio's beta, we have all the information in the world that we need to find the actual weights from Microsoft, PepsiCo, Apple, and Tesla, right? It was a quick little magic trick. Very easy, 10 over 75, 25 over 75, 15 over 75, 25 over 75. All these different little like equations gave us the weights of one, two, three, and four. In other words, the weights of Microsoft, PepsiCo, Apple, and Tesla. And then when we had that, we were able to once again figure out, okay, we have the betas of every single equity except Tesla. Look at that. It becomes a very simple game when we look at our formula, when we have it in front of us, we highlight the stuff that we know and we highlight the stuff that we don't know. As you can notice on the top right-hand side of the screen, well, I guess on the like, left window, <laughs> you will notice that everything in blue is stuff that we knew. Everything in red is stuff that we didn't know. Right? Beta's the beta for Tesla. Then you solve for the missing beta by using some quick algebra. And please let me know if I got it wrong. I did a quick proof just now. It seems like it's okay. But nonetheless, I'm more than open to always reviewing my stuff because I want to give you the best tools out there to succeed. So I hope this gave you some context. I hope this helps you out. And really good luck on your studying process. There's so many resources on East My House. There's so many resources on my channel, uh, my YouTube channel. And just, if you look up Isma Helps on, uh, online or on Facebook or on Twitter, you will find an abundance of content that will help you really learn. And it's like a, it's like a library. It's like a, it's like a what's, the, what's the term? I don't know how to say it in English nor in French. It's like a, like a pre, yeah, it's a pre of knowledge. Anyways, I'll leave it at that. But hopefully this helped you out. Um, and yeah, I'll see you in the next video. I'm really happy to help you guys out. It, it makes my day, especially during hard times. It, it definitely is a good place to be at. So 
Have a good one. See you next time.